Okay, I'm going to do a very quick video reviewing this video from Encyclopedia Britannica on the thing of when did women start wearing pants in the U.S. Hmm, let's check about this. It's strange to think about today, but there was a time in the United States when women just didn't wear pants. In many cultures, women wearing some kind of trouser is an ancient phenomenon. Okay, um... We're not really showing any kind of proof other than just these photos and whatever else. But uh, the pants, the quote unquote trousers that they're trying to say, um, don't resemble anything at all that women wear today. Okay, so, but, and I'm sorry for the irritating music going along with the background thing here, but secular source, what do you expect? Let's watch. But in the United States, there was a time when women were expected to limit their options to skirts and dresses especially out in public. So when... Um, and it was that way for thousands of years, by the way. It wasn't just in, in the United States. And, and how did this change? When did women start wearing pants? Well, first, let's be clear that some women have sometimes worn pants in America for centuries. Women sometimes wore pants for work or leisure, even in the 19th century. Though society didn't always look kindly on these practical clothing decisions. The long... See, the little little thing there, practical clothing decisions. It's practical to wear pants. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because my wife hasn't worn pants in years, and we do, I mean, she helps split firewood, she rides snowmobiles, she rides four-wheeler, she's very active. We go kayaking, canoeing, hiking, climbing mountains. She has no problem. Whatever. Skirts women wore were often bulky and heavy. These clothes were both socially and physically restrictive. Uh, socially and physically restrictive. Uh, socially restrictive? What are you trying to say there? Oh, that's right. It goes against feminism. Yeah. Socially restrictive. Mm -hmm. Can't show off your nakedness. Yeah. They got in the way when women wanted to enjoy a full range of motion. The dress reform... Uh, no, they didn't. And of course, if they show Victorian examples and whatever else. Oh, they got in the way. And they, well, yeah, the Victorians went too far with their dresses. They got way too fancy. But, you know, you take the ancient dress styles and whatever else, like what my wife wears, the sort of the Nordic, ancient Nordic style. It's not restrictive. It doesn't get in the way. It's nonsense. You know, and, and see this, it's not just, oh, we like pants and dresses are okay. No, there's it's anti-dress is what you'll get from this modern stuff. That's why it's satanic. That's why the transvestite movement, which is what this is, and I'll never say that, but transvestite was invented in the early 1900s, the word. Okay? You're wearing the vesture of some of the opposite sex. That's what it's about. You're transvestite. Let's continue. Form movement arose in the mid-19th century with the goal of giving women the freedom to wear trousers for both practical and political purposes. Political purposes? What? Huh? <laughs> Let's continue. Trousers were seen as a symbol of women's rights, a radical proposition at the time. Ah, there you go. Feminism. Just like I've said. Secular source. Hmm. It was around 1851 that a woman named Elizabeth Smith Miller designed an outfit that would become iconic among believers in the concept of what was called rational dress for women. It consisted of a skirt and loose trousers with a short jacket on top. The design was championed by Amelia Jenks Bloomer, and they quickly became known as Bloomers. Bloomers eventually fell out of fashion, but the name lives on as a description for various baggy divided garments for the lower body. Still, as the popularity of Bloomers faded, pants became once again something women generally wore only in private or for sporting activities. It would take big changes to finally bring women's pants into the mainstream. It would take big changes. It's a political movement. If you're a Christian woman and you say, I, I like wearing pants and whatever else, that you're part of a political movement. It was unacceptable before that. You have to understand that. It's part of the end times deception. Let's continue. And those changes came with two world wars. 
During the First World War, the mobilization of men in the army meant that women began doing jobs that had previously been reserved for men, and sometimes wearing the pants that went with them. Oh, sometimes wearing the pants that went with them. Wearing men's clothing. Huh, that could be a good time to go to the Bible. Here we have, let me just make this a little bit smaller here. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Well, that's Old Testament. It's under the law. Okay, please show me in the New Testament where that was undone. Please show me where God said, okay, hey, yeah, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. Don't worry about it. Yeah, women can start wearing pants now. Show it to me. Okay? Any of you feminists out there? You want to show me where uh, it's okay to wear pants? Show it to me in the New Testament, okay? Otherwise, that's still binding. And it's not just, oh, I, you know, it's not good. Or You're an abomination unto the Lord when you wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Like they just got done saying here. But see, they had to take women out of the home through the war effort. Give you a career and everything else. Now women, oh, I just can't, you know, not... Uh, work we both have to work we have to have two incomes where did it come from then you put your children in public school and then they get shot up by some pervert that goes in there oh why would god allow it yeah let's continue but it was during world war ii that women in both civilian and military life began wearing pants in large numbers not just for work but socially too it's hard to imagine Rosie the Riveter wearing a skirt below that famous raised bicep. After the war, many women continued to wear pants, but women's fashion still tended to focus on skirts and dresses. But more than a century after women's rights activists had first begun their push to reform... By the way, let me just show you there as well. Notice that they're also smoking in public, which was considered also a very wicked and satanic thing for good reason. Hmm, they don't bring that up, but uh, yeah, that's also popular now among women. Political movement. Let's continue. On how women dress, the women's liberation movement of the 1960s and 1970s finally helped to break down the stigma against women wearing pants. Today mm -hmm. in the U.S., the question of whether women can wear pants in public isn't a question at all, which means we're free to move on to the next frontier of gendered fashion making it socially acceptable for men to wear dresses. Fair's fair, right? Yeah, fair's fair, right? Um, not if you actually believe the Bible, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. You know, it's kind of a strange thing how you have women that say, well, it's just about pants, it's just about practicality, whatever else. Then why is it that it lines up perfectly with Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5? First, the women put on that which pertaineth unto a man, and then man put on a woman's garment. You see, it's a political movement. Just like sodomy. Sodomy is a political movement. Where were all the sodomites in the 1800s if it's a totally normal, natural thing? Where were they in the 1700s? Where were they in the 1600s? No. The devil makes things a political movement you become part of this thing i'm part of the you know such and such system and whatever else and he does it to destroy people and destroy the word of god the authority of scripture you know people used to look at that and they'd say whoa okay i fear that i'm not going to wear anything which pertaineth unto a woman i won't wear anything which pertaineth unto a man say it that way or a woman's garment if you're a man but now hey let's just get rid of that so I saw that video and I thought, I really need to share that. Um, secular source, completely secular source. And uh, actually I was doing a little bit of research and this is how I came across that video. One of you wrote in the comments the thing about Mary Daly, this witch right here, American philosopher. She was one of the big things as a radical feminist philosopher. She was one of the 1960s liberation movement women. She was a sodomite all of her life. But uh, check this out. Um, Mary Daly was an American radical feminist philosopher and theologian. Daly, who described herself as radical lesbian feminist, taught at the Jesuit-run Boston College for 33 years. 
Once a practicing Roman Catholic, she had disavowed Christianity by the early 1970s. Then what's she doing teaching at a Jesuit school? <laughs> Insane. You know, went to four different Catholic universities here. University of Freiburg here is a Jesuit school. So she's a Roman Catholic Jesuit. There she is. Videos about this horrible witch. You know. And she's one of the ones that helped to make pants acceptable. So you want to defend the thing of women wearing pants? That's your movement. Uh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we will dress appropriately according to how God made us. All right? And I will call out any sick, mentally ill individuals that say that they should be transitioning and over this way and wearing that and whatever else. It's sin, it's wicked, and they're perverts. Period.